Hey everyone, welcome back to Pawpaw's Workshop. Today I'm back in the shop working with a laser. Now this is the X-Tool uh, D1 laser, and this does have the extension kit on it. But the real question that I want to talk about is do you have to home the machine? Well, the short answer is no. Can you still engrave and cut and do all of those things? Yes. Today I'm going to show you that you can use the current position and be able to position the laser head anywhere that you wish in this work area and be able to carve and cut and do anything that you want just fine without all the fancy setups and eliminates the problem that some of you have had on being able to home the machine. It's not a requirement. These are the two projects that I'm actually going to be cutting out using the laser today. Now this video is not about how I designed this. I have other videos for this. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to be using the Lightburn software. I'm going to set it up with the D1 laser, but I'm going to set it up with the standard bed, not with the extension bed. In addition to that, we're going to take it one step further, and I'm going to be using the Lightburn software with the current position. I will not be homing the machine at all when I first turn it on. Also, I'm digging through my scrap bin to find all of the different small pieces that I can to be able to cut out the project. The material is actually a 5mm underlayment plywood that I'm using to cut out this project. And yes, I'm going to be using the air assist to be able to aid in being able to cut out this project, which will help to be able to remove those chips and that ash away from the project itself. When you first turn on the laser, this is the screen that you're going to see. I want to be able to come down to this tab. And if this tab is not showing in yours, all you need to do is just come up here to the window and then you can select the tab and open it up, be placed right here. Now, once you have the machine turned on, let's select a device. I'm going to use the regular D1 X tool and I'm going to select the same thing here, the X tool D1. And you can see this screen is a small format screen. So after I turn the machine on and I select the device that I'm going to be using, the next step typically would be home the machine. And if I home the machine, it's going to go up to this top left hand corner. I don't want to do that. Now that would be where the laser head would go. But in this case, I have the extension bed on and I really don't want to do that. That's why I've chosen to use the current position for this video. So we're going to be referencing everything off of this green dot. Now if you'll notice, right here in the center is the green dot. That is going to be where the center of this work area is going to be. So this is going to be the start point. And this is going to be where I'm going to place the laser head. But to be able to do that, let's get a project and put that into the uh, work bed here. And I want to show you exactly how I use that. The next step, let's come down to the art library. I'm going to go over here to the hobby station. And I'm going to select this item right here, which is my rack C. This is what I actually cut out today. And if I zoom out, you can see the different project. Well, that's a lot of material to cut. I don't have a piece of wood that is large enough. So what I can do is just segment this down into smaller pieces. So for an example, I can take all of this and delete it out for right now. We'll just cut it. And then I'm going to take this section. I can rotate it. We'll rotate it to 90 degrees. And then we'll place it up into the work area. And with that done, you can see how it's extending beyond the work area. But it's not extending beyond the extension bed. If I come down just for the sake of showing you this, if I put in the extension bed, you can see then how I could place this anywhere that I wished in this area. And that's certainly a possibility. So don't get me wrong on that. But I wanted to be able to show you how you could utilize the extension bed without having that setup and the fact that you can in fact cut off of this grid. 
So I'm going to put this back to the smaller one. Move this back up into this area. And now all I need to do is find a piece of material that is this size to be able to put onto the laser. I can look up here and I can see this is about 19 inches by just over 5 inches. So that's the size of the material that I need. And as long as that will fit on the extension bed, I can cut out this whole entire area. And that's one of the big advantages of having the extension bed. Now typically what I will do, since I know that this is taking a 19 inch board, I usually just measure from the center point down to here, and that's where I'm going to place the laser. So if I just move this down from this point down to about 10 inches, then I know it's going to fit. Let me show you what I mean. At this point, I can move this laser head anywhere that I want and place this material also anywhere that I wish. The one thing that I want to do is since I'm using the center position and I know this is 19 inches, well, I can just measure down 10 inches and that would work just fine. So line that up with the red crosshairs and I know if I use this as the center point for the project that it will fit into this work area. And that's just how simple the setup is to be able to get this ready to carve. Now this allows me to set the projects up very easy, very quickly, without taking a whole lot of time. Now, is this, you know, process for everybody? Probably not. But when I first started with the lasers, I never, ever homed the machines, and I always used this method. Since I've been using the X-Tool and some of the other lasers, yes, I have homed them. But quite frankly, for me, it's just about as easy to use the current position, drop the material onto the laser bed, line it to the center point, do the framing, and start the, the cutting. And it has worked out extremely well. The framing is nice because it actually shows you exactly where the project is going to be cutting. And if you need to adjust it a little bit, you easily can. Once you have everything placed where you want it, then we're just going to hit frame. Another area of confusion is the red crosshairs on the X-Tool. Don't let that be a problem. The red crosshair is the actual location that's going to frame that material and show you exactly where it's going to be carving. If that is a problem, you can set up a tool path and use the laser head itself on a very low, low power to be able to identify where your project is going to lay out. The nice thing about this, I can also slide this material around if I want to change the location and then frame again. See that's coming right down to that point. If I didn't want to waste that material, I could just slide it up a little bit more. And I could also slide it over here to the edge and have less waste that way. So this is another advantage to be able to do it this way. Once you're happy, then of course, you can secure it down. And that comes right back to the center location. Now, since we moved everything, let's frame this one more time and make sure that it'll still fit onto the uh, material that we have. Now that I know it's going to fit onto the project, I need to adjust the height, make sure that that is correct, and then I can start the cutting. So at this point, I'm ready to hit start and cut out this particular piece. Now each of these pieces that I cut out were done exactly the same way. You can see how that extends beyond that work area grid, and you can see here, in reality, it's doing just fine as far as the cutting out of this project. And that's using the current position as the center location. Here's another piece that I cut out where the center location was just the center of the board. And again, you can see it cutting out just fine. So the placement of the green dot in the center of that material and then aligning the laser head to that exact point is the key to this very simple process. And that green dot and the material that you're cutting out can be placed anywhere in this work bed. 
hopefully for all of these different pieces that you're seeing me cut out for this project these boards are actually placed in different locations on this grid work and it really doesn't matter because as you line this up the green dot is going to be in the center of that material as long as you place the laser head in exactly the same point everything is going to work just fine using this method to be able to make projects such as this allows me to be able to really go through the scrap bin because you can see on the right side of the screen where I've already cut out some of the different items I had a material left that I could place another portion of the project on and continue to use up the scraps and in the end these projects you would never know were made from just scrap material that was left over from other projects. The good thing about this, you're not limited to just doing projects such as this. Many of the different laser projects that I have done and the ones that you see on the wall in my shop were all done using this method. So you can do just simple engravings or you can do cutouts and make boxes like this. It's all up to you and the creativity that you have with your imagination. And using the current position in the Lightburn software is a great way to be able to do it. It's so simple and very easy to be able to do this type of process. I want to take this opportunity to thank everybody for watching this short video today. I know this has been a question that has been on people's mind. And I wanted to be able to do this short video to help explain just how easy it is to be able to use the current position to be able to do your engravings, such as what you see behind me here, as well as the cutouts and the projects that I did today. It's very, very easy to be able to do it, and it allows you to use a lot of these scrap type material to be able to fit them into places that otherwise these boards would probably just go into the trash can. So if you like this video, by all means, give me a thumbs up, and don't forget, hit that little subscribe button and the bell notification down below. I enjoy doing these type of videos for you, and if you have questions, by all means, leave me a comment, ask the question, I'll do everything that I can to be able to answer the question for you, and if need be, I'll even do a video for you to be able to help answer the questions. I also want to especially thank the Patreons who support this channel. The support that they give is absolutely phenomenal, and I really appreciate each and every one of them. I look forward to seeing each and every one of you in the next project that I'm doing, whatever that happens to be. So for now, bye-bye, and I'll see you real soon.